What's up, guys? Welcome to a new episode of Pressure Bay Props. As always, I am Tony coming at you with the Mech for Aaron, the Toy Enhancers Mech Contest. Um, I got a whole motivation behind what I did, and I'll do that before I even show you the tour, as always. But before I do that, uh, I just want to say thank you to Aaron because I couldn't find one of these in my area, and he was gracious enough to send me one to enter the contest. So I appreciate you, and I will be sending this to you either at the end of this week or early next week. Just stay tuned. It'll be coming to you. But I appreciate the... Um, I appreciate the generosity. I appreciate uh, uh, the willingness to send me one to enter. So thank you so much, and I hope I didn't let you down. Uh, that being said, uh, I'll tell you about my mech. <laughs> I'll switch over now. There you go. So you can see. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the video. Never mind. Hold on. Let me just. There you go. Uh, when I got this thing out of box, the first my first immediate knee jerk response was, "Oh shit, this doesn't have enough firepower." Uh, so I scoured my my bin of just extra shit that I that I have that I don't have for anybody in particular. It's just like shit that came with uh, f figures that I was already gonna customize or things that I was already working on, and it's just kind of extra shit that I have. So that was immediately where I went to with this stuff. But I my first impression of it was I knew because it's gonna be a contest for Aaron the Toy Enhancer, and it had to be uh, you know obviously scaled for 112 scale. Whether it be classifieds, Marvel Legends, or whatever, just had to be scaled for 112. Uh, I, I, I'm a big crossover guy. If anybody knows my channel, if anybody knows when I take pictures or anything, I always cross genres over. I always cross uh, properties all the time. I, I, I just I love the crossover appeal. So I immediately uh, I have the the Marvel Legends Bone Breaker build a figure. I don't do anything with it. Uh, so it just sits there and, and I like the tank But I feel like the tank could be a drone for something So I pulled the, the body piece out With the with the with That like mechanical waist thing that he has And that mechanical waist thing If put backwards will fit right inside And he can click right in And the door closes with his head in there no problem So when I did that I started to think to myself Well this guy looks like he could be a dreadnought I mean he looks the part He's got a mohawk He's got a funny looking face uh, you got the sunglasses um, The sleeveless shirt is a dead given um, But my motivation was If you want to use this for guys like Duke uh, uh, Or even guys like from Valiverse You could still use his body Because he just has a green sleeveless shirt with gloves And that's what it, that's what you would probably look like If you were inside a mech It's going to get hot as shit So I just thought Instead of switching bodies out Just leave the body in And switch the heads out Make it a little easier Now the whole thing can still come out. I didn't fit it in there. So if you want to just put like a female in there, then you take that out and you can, you know, cross the legs and do whatever the fuck you got to do and you can fit the female in there. But in terms of the guys, like you're not going to get Roadblock in there. He's too big. You're not going to get a, 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 a Gung Ho in there. He's too big. But if you take Gung Ho's head and put him in there, you can, you know. And if you're going to take apart like a, a, an extra Roadblock and just take his legs off, you could fit Roadblock in there then, you know. But I'm not going to fucking rip my figures apart. So I'd rather just change the heads if I have to, you know? And again, Roadblock doesn't need to be in a mech. He's like a one-man army. Like, he doesn't, need to, he doesn't need that machine. This machine is for, like, you know, people who are going to need it, like pilots and stuff like that, you know? So that's my motivation for it. And then going further into it, I thought to myself, well, if everybody's going to make a G.I. Joe or a Cobra one, well, I, don't, I would maybe kind of nod to a, sm a smaller group. Like the Dreadnoughts. I feel like they don't have any cool vehicles or stuff like that. Apart from that one death machine thing that everybody wants. Because um, most of the people that I'm seeing. They're customizing the tractor supply pickup truck. Or they're, they're, they're uh, customizing Wolverine and, and Punisher motorcycles. And Undertaker motorcycles. Uh, I feel like they, they, they would probably get their hands on something. Their mechanics and shit. And they would fix it. So this to me would be something that they could probably understand the science behind. And kind of figure it out and have the help of Cobra to put all the technology inside of it. But like the mechanics of it, they can figure it out. They can fix this thing up. So I immediately, you know, started to ferment the ideas. And then I just started to kind of go from there. What am I going to add to it? What am I going to, well, you know, if it's inspired by the Dreadnoughts, then you got to have certain things attached to it. At least that was my thinking. Um, and that's where I came up with this, with this idea. Uh, I hope you guys like it. <laughs> Here we go. We'll start out right here. This is the first thing is the minigun. Like I said, my first thing, uh, this doesn't have enough firepower. It needs firepower. So that gun is from the uh, G.I. Joe Sigma-6 uh, Dragonhawk. 
It was that, like that big uh, hovercraft looking thing. And this gun was fixed on the front of it. Uh, a while back, Ninja uh, made a, a video about how he found one in a, uh, like a hobby shop. And he really didn't have to customize much. He just ripped the seats out and he could fit like a, a female figure inside of it. And it's true, you can. Uh, and so I bought one, but it wasn't complete. Um, I searched all the third market sites like uh, Macari and eBay, and I found it on Poshmark. Um, I think it was like a hundred bucks, but it was missing one. It had everything else, but it was missing one of the um, like the the, the actual uh, uh, hover pieces, the fans. So I was like, "Fuck!" So I go on Macari and I found one for like forty dollars, and it had both, but it was missing like some other pieces. So I kind of, I was like, all right. So I took that one. I completed one because I wanted that for my Joes. And then I just ripped the other one apart. It was just like, I can probably use pieces for this, pieces for that. We'll figure it out. Put that gun in a box and just never looked at it again. And as soon as I took this mech out of the box, that gun immediately popped right in my head. For that's for this, for that little black box that's attached to the mech. Because when I saw this this black box on this side, especially this side, I immediately thought targeting system. I know me and Woody were kind of on the same page there because I think he said the same thing. So immediately that was my first thought. Was, oh, that's a targeting system. A gun should be attached to that. So the, that thing targets and then the gun just goes wherever the target is. Uh, so that's why I attached that gun. And I just used the Chicago screw. I drilled a hole inside because the thing is hollow. So I drilled a hole inside. I pushed the Chicago screw through. Stuck the gun on and then screwed it on the end. So now it, it, it articulates up and down um, with no problem because it's a Chicago screw. If you don't know what a Chicago screw is, it's just like a long tube with a flat end and a flat screw goes into it. Um, a lot of people use it in cosplay for elbow joints and knee joints. So if you ever need something to kind of like spin freely, they go all the way down to a, a 3 16 of an inch. Uh, you buy them at Lowe's. Um, in the specialty screw section, you know, like Lowe's has a specific way they, they divvy out there, like screws and stuff. They have like a, a pull-out cabinet. It's not like a Home Depot. Everything's hanging. You can't get it at Home Depot. It's just hanging. Um, Lowe's is in, the, in the, the bin. It says specialty screws, and you'll see them. Uh, but yeah, that's what I used to this. Um, now, I lower down the arm here. Uh, I, I, in the sense, speaking of Woody, I got to shout you out, brother, because me and you were on the same page big time, not only the targeting systems, but in terms of recycling pieces of the, the box and the garbage inside of it, because I always do that. I mean, this little piece that's attached to it, this is originally where the saw was, and I did not like it. it, 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 it um, I had so many ideas for the saw, and we'll get to the saw in a second, so I immediately took that off, and I wanted to add something else. So when I saw this little piece... It was holding the action figure in the in the packaging. So it was the action figure and then the mech behind him. And when I pulled the action figure out, this little plastic piece was holding him in, in the box. And I was like, huh, that thing looks cool. It looks like almost like an anchor. Like, like the boats that just throw and it just drags behind. Um, so I was like, okay, well, I don't want the saw here no more. What am I going to do? Uh, so I cut up this piece just to make some points. Just to kind of make some like uh, uh, pointy edges. And uh, I attached a chain to it, then put a Chicago screw through the arm, wrapped the chain around that. And then now I just thought, well, now he's got a, like an anti-air weapon or a, an anti-tank weapon where he can kind of, or like anything, like he can rip uh, uh, doors off safe vaults, you know, by just hooking this thing and just yanking it because the, the mech is strong or whatever, right? So I just, it was just a way to recycle this piece because like I said, I really liked the way it looked. And I was like, I don't want to just toss this or save it. I want to use it for this because the whole goal of this at least from my perspective, was to enhance the thing because it's for Aaron the Toy Enhancer's contest. So I didn't just want to paint it. I didn't just want to uh, 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 you know, rip the seat out and go, okay, now you can put a Joe in here, but it's repainted. I wanted to really enhance the toy considering it was for Aaron the Toy Enhancer. So I just wanted to recycle pieces. I wanted to add pieces to it. Uh, originally, I wanted to make it articulate more, but I didn't want to destroy because he only sent me one. You know, so maybe on a second one, if I have a fine one, I will try because I've seen a couple people do it. Um, but I didn't want to destroy this because I only had one shot at it. So I didn't want to fuck anything up. Uh, but I think there is ways to articulate this if you really try. But you really got to try. So, uh, that being said, 
that's all I did. I just recycled this piece. I know Woody recycled the screw pieces that held the mech in place, whereas I just used the piece that held the action figure itself. And the chain I had, so that was just easy. That was an easy add to it. Uh, but I was very happy with this. This spot. now, see, the chain comes right off it, and that circle thing is right here. Where is it? It's this right here. This is literally uh, uh, the washers that come with the TV mounts, so they don't sit directly against it. So if you need to create, create space, they don't have the longer ones and the small ones. I just took this, I sanded the inside to make it a little wider, and so it fit right over the head of the Chicago screw. Okay, then I glued it and and melted the plastic so it would kind of like create like a like melt together, so it would create like a single piece, and then just let it sit. For like 24 hours and then I attached the chain and hooked it up and now like I said it just kind of slides right over the head of the Chicago screw and just sits on the arm and you can just pop it off and, and, and uh, play with it if you need to I know I know all that just sounded real wrong but it doesn't care get your heads out of the gutter uh, <laughs> so the spikes on the leg if you see let's see there's all the chain coming off um, I, I added a lot of chain because I don't know if uh, to me uh, Aaron said that he was going to send all the mechs back to the people who participated but if he doesn't send this back to me because he gave this to me i don't give a shit but if he sends it back to me i had ideas for taking pictures where because i'm gonna eventually get the the uh, dragonfly obviously whenever it fucking comes november december whenever and my my image of this was wild bill hooked the, the, this thing has the, the the plane hooked and maybe the vamp comes out of nowhere uh to take this thing out i don't know that was just my my mindset with it so that's why i made the chain so long because i had like this mega wide shot where it's holding the helicopter, uh, but you can you can use a, a shorter chain. Depends on how long uh, how long you want to extend the anchor piece. Uh, this is what I was talking about the spikes. Um, like I said, because it was a dreadnought vehicle, I wanted to uh, pay homage to them. They remind me of like the Road Warriors, uh, the, the Legion of Doom, you know. So and not the Justice League Legion of Doom. I'm talking about the WWF, you know, Road Warrior, Hawk Road Warrior, Animal Legion of Doom. So I wanted to add spikes. I wanted to, because I had that 80s, like, uh, uh, heavy metal, you know, Judas Priest feel, the Dragnox, at least from my perspective. So I added some spikes. Um, and uh, I don't know if you noticed, but we'll get to that in a second, the the, the guns and, and, and right above, uh, I always forget this guy. I always forget their names. Uh, like I said, I, I, I medicate myself, so short-term memory definitely eludes me. Uh but I definitely like the spike touch. Uh, here I'm talking about the 50 cal cannons or whatever they were. But I think they're 50 cal uh, guns. They came with the uh, Fortnite metalhead guys. And I bought so many of them because they were at uh, Holly's for like 6 bucks. So I have so many of these guns. Uh, so I just basically cut the, uh, tra the, like the, the handle off, the back piece. And this right here is where it had. It was like a one piece clear red plastic. Because it had lights and it had like a sound effect with, with, uh, with guns. I yanked all that shit out, obviously. But I did like the piece. So I was just like, huh. If you just drill a hole big enough, you could fit the gun through. And this will just act as the piece to hold it. And I know a lot of people had already they, they painted theirs. Because they really didn't give a fuck about it lighting up. So I was like, that's a good idea. So I pulled it out and I, I, I painted it um, like a gunmetal gray. Because I, I knew that gunmetal would really contrast with this green real well. Or even the black part of the mech. So I was like, all right, gun, I'll paint a gunmetal, and then I'll stick two cannons out. Kind of, and I got that inspiration from Ed 209 from Robocop. I know it was his arms, but I just kind of felt like if you look at his body, it would look like Ed 209 with those guns out. So I was like, all right, I'll go that way. Um, and I added that. Obviously, the, the, the side pieces, they don't have any windows when it comes. It's just open. So I put crochet netting just to add protection for the driver or the operator um, themselves. Uh... But I really like how it's came, how it came out. Like it looked good. And when I, even when I just added the guns to the front, I was like, "All right, now it's already looking much better." Because now it looks like it's got a, already more firepower than it had, you know. Um, but up here is is like I said, this is where this is another thing I noticed. Everybody yanks this orange thing out and puts netting or or, or action figure plastic or whatever. But it has like this targeting thing, and everything is there. It fits the way it's the way it's molded. It has to fit this thing in, and I don't want to fucking sit here and cut everything out and and I have to glue and fuck anything up. So I just took this off, and I took a, a sharpie marker and I just colored in all the raised detail that was in in on the inside, not on the outside, on the inside of the on the bubble. 
because that's supposed to be where the driver is going to be looking. So when I stuck Bone Breaker inside of it, he kind of lined right up with it. So I was just like, why am I going to destroy this thing? I'm just going to leave. This has a targeting system. It has everything I need. So I just kept it and I just I colored it in so you could see it. Um, but I, like I said, I, I, I wanted to enhance the toy. I didn't want to rip it apart. You know, I did rip up rip it apart to kind of paint it and stuff like that, but which I didn't even really do. Like I left it green because I, I felt like in my head the motivation was the Dreadnoughts might have found this on a battlefield or in a junkyard, and they just took it to their garage, which is kind of the inspiration for like the image that you see. Um, and they're putting it together, like they're building it for Bonebreaker. Because like I said to me, Bonebreaker isn't a, isn't an Age of Apocalypse figure. Okay, in this in this sec in this uh, 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 sector of the universe or my world, as I've told you before, is crossed over. So maybe this guy is paralyzed, and they built him this tank, and now they're building him his own set of legs, essentially, which is this mech. That's my head. Because if I get this back from Aaron the Toy Enhancer, that's essentially what I'm going to do. It. I'm going to keep Bone Breaker in it because he looks like he pairs perfect with these guys. Um, I know some people say. They don't pair well together. The like one looks like this, the other looks like that, but they're the same fucking scale. Okay? They're cartoon characters and comic book characters. They pair fine. Okay? If you're gonna start getting into the gory gory details of things, then I don't know what to fucking tell you. Use your imagination, right? But uh that's my motivation is I bone breaker should be like he pairs well with them. He has a mo like I said, he looks perfect. I cut the stupid dominatrix shit that he had on that metal strapping that's so stupid i cut that part off because like i said if you're gonna switch heads if you want it for the joes he just has a green uh sleeveless shirt on. uh but anyway let me, let me get back into this uh but i like it and here's here's what i did at the top now at the top they had circle plastic what was supposed to be like lights uh i saw a few people drill holes in the back stick an led through and that was it and i was just like well I don't know. I wanted to fuck with lighting. Like, I wanted to try new new lighting things. And I love these little remote control spotlights. They go on, like, pickup trucks, remote control pickup trucks, or whatever it is. So I loved them. So I picked them up. And I picked up two sets. And the second set I used, too. And I'll show you. I don't. I didn't really show you, but I'll explain to you what I did with them. But I felt like these would be perfect to replace those little circle ones. Because I wanted to put real lights here anyway. So I just stuck to these square spotlights. And, uh... I mean, it came with a little, um, it came with like a little, uh, a little, uh, uh, mount so that the light, so that the, that they can articulate up and down and you can turn it side to side. So I, I fixed that onto the thing. I, I screw, screwed it in and then screwed these on. They're a bitch to, they're a bitch to get on. You have to get a special, uh, special tool that I had to get. It has, it has to have these, uh. It has to have these little fucking like Allen wrench bits, but like the th fucking thinnest one possible. I think it was this one. And that's how you screw these fucking things on. So I had to go to the store and buy this uh, just to get them on because they were being a pain in the ass. I didn't have like an Allen wrench small enough. Um, but once they got on, the, I fucking love them, dude. And, and like I said, I, I do will show you that it does obviously light up now if you see those lights. Uh, this was the Buzz Lightyear gun from that three pack with the Zerg bots. Um, I use this gun for a lot of shit. I have so many um, and it just looks like a giant laser cannon so my motivation was that's not a missile box that's another targeting system and another uh, uh, like defense system and then the laser on top is like it's 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 gun um, like I said it had no fucking firepower it's a goddamn exos you know I don't care that it had this giant gun on its hand and if I had my choice I would ask for two hands two of those grabby hands I'd like I, I probably prefer those better than the gun on one hand. Because I would rather put a gun in its hand. Like you just get a giant gun and put it in its hand. Than it just having a gun hand. But beggars can't be choosers. I didn't make the thing. A soldier forced it. So. Uh, but I do I do like the uh, the laser cannon. Again I put the spikes on the other side. Now. Here's the, here's the problem with the spikes on the shoulder. The spikes on the shoulder with the minigun. The, the ammo belt. If you can see it. It, the screws hit it. So you just got to lift the ammo belt and then the arm will turn fine. In fact, sometimes it actually does me a favor because it'll hold the arm in place just in case if it slides back down. Because again, this is a Dollar Tree toy and I added a lot of weight to the arms. So uh, not to say that it does because it doesn't. If I put it up, it stays. The arms stay up. But just on the off chance that it, it could, that it, it catches on the ammo belt and it won't come down. Uh, but I did the spikes on both shoulders. Like I said, 
I felt like it was LOD, Road Warriors. They would kind of add that stuff to give it like that fucking metal feel to it, you know? Uh, here's the cannon. In the, uh, now, this is what I did. I took the razor. Uh, I took the saw off the other side, and I was so annoyed that the blade was fixed. So I cut around it, took it off, took some centroplastic, took that same piece that I cut off, drew a template out of it, and then made my own saw blade that actually now articulates and spins. Because I just that shit was driving me crazy. Like you couldn't even give them a spinning blade. Like so, but so I, I made the blade spin. Um, and like I said, it's the same size as the one it came with because I used that as the template. Um, and then the gun on on next to the, the gun that came with it because this is the gun that came with it. Now, the saw blade is fixed by that screw. It articulates up and down, but it's a screw, so eventually it starts to come loose. So you're gonna have to tighten it. But again, this is for photography, for setting up on a shelf. The decorating dioramas, whatever it is, it's supposed to be background fodder. Um, you just tighten up the screw a few times, and you're fucking fine. I'm not sitting here trying to sell this as a as a, a major toy. So that was my custom job. Was it a shine job? Yeah, but I don't. What, what do you want me to tell you? All right. Uh, but I made the gun a flamethrower. I stuck this metal tube. I cut a a, a piece of metal tubing that I had, and I st stuck this on the end with some hot glue so it would stay. Um, I drilled a hole in the end of the gun and stuck an LED light and then stuck this over the LED light with the hot glue. So now it's not going to go nowhere. Um, but now that I made it a flamethrower, I had to fix like hoses and, and, and like a, a tank because it has to have obviously propane or whatever the fuck you need. Right. So uh, the tubing is just a plastic tubing that I had. And then what I did because I needed to find a way to feed the electrical wire somewhere. And I didn't want to start cutting things out in the gun, in, in the arm. I just drilled a, drilled a hole through the bottom of these little tubes that are on the gun. Then stuck the, the lighting wire through that. Then heated up the end of the tube and stuck the wire through the tube. And then pushed the tube over these little black knobs. I don't know what the fuck you want to call them. Uh, that are coming out of the gun. And then I fed that into the big, what would have been, I guess, the ammo clip of the gun. I stuck the tube into there that fed the wire back up into the arm that I needed. And then I fed my wire up through the arm and then into the shoulder, into the body. Because all the connection, all the connectors go into the inside the mech suit. Because I've, I've seen mechs like that where all like the wiring is around them and shit. So I was fine with it being kind of looking like that. So that's why I feed everything in through the back. There's a hole in the back. So I feed everything in through the hole. And then I, fed, I drilled a hole on the side and then just fed the wires right through. Um, it was like I said This was a fun build It was very very fun to do uh, I had a good time But that's that's basically what I did on this arm So I basically put the saw and the gun together So the saw comes up He can shoot with the flame And then the saw kind of does this Because that's what a chopping saw is supposed to do While it actually spins uh, The small guns on the arms I drilled holes to make it So if you want to add like a small effect onto the gun Every gun here You can add an effect so if you want to put a flame effect in there, you can stick a flame effect in there too. Um, I drilled holes in the mini gun. So if you want to stick a, 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 like the firing effect, the uh, uh, but, uh, whatever the fuck it's called on that gun, you can. I drilled two giant holes for the laser. So you want to stick a, blue, a fucking laser into it, you can. If you want to stick a light into it, you can. Um, and then, like I said, the small ones on the arms, these small little mini guns you see on the, the upper arms, I drilled little holes into them. So if you want to stick a fucking little fire effect in there, you can too. Like I said, it was all about enhancing the toy and making the toy uh, uh, awesome in like photography and stop motion and things of that nature. Uh, but I really like the way it came out. Like I said, see it goes up, so it'll chop up and down, and then that's the flamethrower itself. Um, uh, here's where I'll show you, I think, the lights. I think is where, And this is the gas can. So this is what I did for the gun. Hold on, let me just bring that back because I forgot about that. And I wanted to explain that part. All right, so... That is from the Fortnite gliders. I just ripped one off, and like I said, it's it's a flamethrower now, so it's gotta have, you know, it's gotta have a feed for gas. So I just drilled a hole on the other side of the ammo. This is where this you see the tubing, and I stuck that all the way and went right in, and then I just filled that little box with hot glue so it held everything in place, the lighting and that. So I was good, um, and I, like I said, it came out great. If I, I could not believe how this came out. And for the gun itself, I just painted some parts gunmetal silver 
and then just do a silver rub and buff over it just to kind of bring up uh the highlights of the gun and uh just kind of make it look like it had a weather a weathered feeling because like i said they found this and now they're it's basically in their garage right now putting it together uh maybe zarani here is right now is just checking on the flamethrower to make sure that works uh while um i think his name is buzzsaw he's just working on like joints on the legs you know uh like i said this was my motivation the dread this is a dreadnought vehicle so uh but i really like the way it came out man i do like i said the, the it it it's, it's it's far it far surpassed my expectation. This is the back of the mech. This is where the battery is now. That battery pack didn't fit in at at first. I had to take some central plastic and literally just kind of make make the make the like the the space smaller so you can just kind of use a little bit of a uh, pressure to just kind of push it in and now just hold itself in place. The bottom is where it screwed into the box. This little piece that the battery is sitting on. I'll show you in a second how I uh. The switch now is what I'm very proud of, by the way. Um, and I'll show you that, like right there, the switch. Uh, that's where the the like for the the soundboard that was that came with this thing. That's where the batteries went. So when I pulled the soundboard out, the batteries and everything came with us. There was a giant hole there. So I just put central plastic to to close it up, and then that that light switch fit right in. So it looked like it was supposed to be there. I was one of those things. That's one of the things I'm most proud of is how I was able to put all the lighting. It fix it inside the mech while still having room for bone breaker and then on top of that hiding that switch in that was so so well that it looks like it was basically put there and it was it was already there so i was very proud of uh i was very that was a happy accident i was very happy how that came out the leg things i just i just kind of glanced over i think i showed it again later but uh hold on let me just get you there those leg things right there are another set of buzz light your guns from that three pack that i was just telling you about and I felt like if you look at the back of this mech, it has what, what looks like forward propulsion uh, boosters on the back, but there's nothing to get it up. So I felt like those would be rocket boosters or even you can turn them and they can be side cannons on his legs. Dealer's choice. But for me, they're, uh, they're like rocket boosters that will, will jack the, the mech this way and then the back propulsion will push him forward. So if he's in space, he can come up and it'll push it forward. And then come up and push it forward. Maybe it doesn't stay up. It just helps it go forward a little bit. I, I don't know. Like I said, dealer's choice. But I felt like um, the back had that part, but this didn't have it. To, to it, it needed a vertical uh, propulsion system. Um, so that's why I added those on the legs. Um, I added a couple spikes on the feet. Uh, this is how I was telling you. The battery basically right there is where I put a piece of central plastic and this big square pieces. Obviously, you see the hole. That's what screwed the mech into the box. So I just use that and I just basically kept that right there. And then I just take the battery pack and you wedge it right in and it fits beautiful. Like it has exact. It just fits perfectly. And like I said, the light switch right there. You turn it on. Boom. Now, before I go any further, the back is just hot glue. So now. The lighting, I took another set of those spotlights and I put them inside and then I filled it with hot glue. So, I mean, it came out perfect. Like, fucking perfect. Um, they fit in perfect. They light it up perfect. It does get a little warm, so don't you can't keep them on too long. But again, if you're just shooting photography, you shut them off in between shots, you turn it on when you're about to shoot. Um, same thing with, like, stop motion, play motion. When you're about to use it, turn it on. When you don't use it, turn it off. And it won't overheat. The batteries won't die. And, you know, general maintenance. Um, but it was awesome, man. I'm very happy the way this came out. So the, uh, it just a simple switch on and off. The, the, so I was so happy when everything worked and this is it lit up from the front. There's the, the light for the cannon. Those spotlights are bright as shit. I got the targeting systems on both sides lighting up. What I did for that, uh, give me a second here. Cause I'll just show you. I'm trying I'm, right now. I'm in the, uh, that's the cockpit. I added a cockpit, I added a cockpit control. Um, right there. I, I filled the front. I basically drilled holes put masking tape, then filled it with hot glue. So the, the glue filled the holes. Then I peeled that off. So I wedged, I, I, I filled it with hot glue. Then I colored it with red marker and uh, it came out perfect. Like I couldn't ask for it back because I didn't want to like stick plastic in there or anything like that. I wanted to fill the holes so that it, it looked like a more like a targeting system. There was no like, like oh, is this like another missile thing? No. Uh, so that's kind of what my motivation behind it. And I did it on both sides. One side I did red and blue. Now here, I took the guns that I cut up, the 50 cal guns, and I made like joysticks so that the guy can, 
so that bone breaker can use it some buttons and i put a light inside there as you can see it's lit up so that you can see them a little bit it does light them up pretty good but um I, my only if i could do something different i would have put a couple more lights in there so you could really see and i would have uh but i didn't know how much space i had and i didn't want to fucking stuff this thing with wires and then i can't get the guy in so that's kind of why i only put one i put one led just in there so you can see the controls like i said i added all those buttons i gotta do small touch-ups before i send it to aaron like paint the inside of that console and uh like i said i wanted to add small things like kill them all like uh marks where they might have taken out some joes things like that but this is I, this is good enough now to do a fresh bay props but uh, i made a control panel for him and i like that we came out like i said the lighting lights him up pretty well um i'm very proud of this thing i'm not gonna lie to you like very proud of it um th there's all the wiring now as you can see from here bang the wire is sitting in there nice and neat it's i looked messy just now but it's in there nice and neat once you get him in he fits in there perfect um I, I, like i said he it closes no problem and it, he looks awesome inside there um see how he's got i have him i basically have the control panel um, his hands fit in there perfectly the little thing fits all the way inside so he looks like he's inside the mech and uh i just got the the saw blade holding it up and it closes in perfectly now you could put now my issue that i had because i fucking customized this thing so much and i put hot glue inside to hold the mesh that the the little lip you got to really push down to get it in so i didn't want to fuck with it right now so that's why it's still kind of sticking out but it does close it closes all the way uh but uh yeah man that's the end uh I'm a, like I said, I'm very proud of it. Like, very proud of it. Uh, I thought it fucking far surpassed what I expected. Um, I was very intimidated by the lighting, but Woody walked me through it. And I appreciate him for that. Um, uh, Aaron, too. Aaron, the toy enhancer, did a video, a live stream while, while wiring things up and basically kind of eased people's minds. Uh, so I was very, like I said, and doing this made me light up the Ninja Turtle van. And now, going forward, I'm probably going to light up a shit ton of stuff. Like a shit ton of stuff. Because now I know I can do it. So, um, this uh, this mech, the Ninja Turtle van, were just like the test to see if I could still do it. And I can. So, I'm going to start, uh, like all those cars that I have in the garage, I'm going to start adding lights to. And like the Batmobile that I customized. So, uh, that should be a good time. But, uh, that's all the time I have. I appreciate you guys. Uh, this, this mech is amazing. Uh, thank you again, Aaron. For real, man. I hope, I hope you like it. I hope I did. Uh, like I hope I did you guys proud. Um, I'm proud. I'm, I'm happy to see everybody's mech. I saw Crimson Cobra Commanders. His look good. Woody's look good. Um, and I'm excited to see the rest. I don't know how this judging process is gonna go. I don't know when it's gonna happen. I couldn't tell you. They didn't tell me anything. Um, I guess they're waiting for everybody to get their mechs in before they finally, you know, kind of uh, unveil this contest. Uh, so I'm hoping, you know. I'm hoping that you guys like it and because uh, I really enjoyed this one. I thought it came out sick. Uh, it has everything that I wanted. Uh, like I said, if you can see on the feet, I added spikes to the feet. I added spikes to the legs and I added spikes to the shoulders. I don't. I, I have a ton of more spikes, but I don't want to go crazy. Because I was more worried about weighing down the arms and it kind of coming down and not being able to, to hold the arms up. So I didn't want that problem. Um, originally, I was going to put ball joints in the shoulders and in the hips so that it could kind of go out and in so that the gun could just do this but i didn't know first off how much time we had and like i said i didn't want to start tearing this thing apart and then all of a sudden i can't put it back together and i gotta tell aaron thank you for buying it and getting it for me but i can't send it to you because i destroyed it so um that being said this was a great alternative i'm happy with this very happy with this i could you could shoot with this i already did um and I'm, I'm very, very happy with the way this looks. I hope you like it as well. Um, please, if you haven't yet, give me a uh, give me a subscription. Uh, give me a thumbs up and leave a comment, please. Uh, and share it. Tell people about me. Um, I do live streams every Sunday now uh, at 7 p.m. Uh, so far, so good. Uh, people are enjoying themselves. They're having a great time. Uh, the last one I did was four hours. I think the last two I did were four hours. I really didn't intend for them to go that long. I was totally content with going an hour, an hour two tops. Um, but the but the the chat is so engaging, the people in there are so awesome that I just feel like I'm not live streaming. I'm hanging out at my house with a bunch of people and we're just shooting the shit, man. It's a it's, it's a good time. It's a good time. I open action figures. I give you little pointers on terms of like uh, customization things, where to buy stuff cheap, where to find stuff cheap. Um, 
and we just talk about life man so uh, like i said please uh, come hang out every sunday it's called the pre-roll uh if you subscribe to the channel you hit the bell you'll get them you'll, you'll see like the because uh, i always uh, uh schedule them so you'll know when they're coming uh so i like i said i hope to see you guys in the chats man uh but uh thank you uh and until next time stay baked